Denganronpa Tagami, Volume 3. I'd stake the Tagami name on it. Summaries. This will be much more like a novel, abridged version, rather than the summaries of Volume 2, so please enjoy and relax. In terms of the development of talent, we are still in the experimental stage, because we do not know how to cultivate talent. Eric Hofer, The Temper of Our Time. This text was written using the following note-taking system. K2K System, version 2.3. Shooter books. Bad books. And popular books. I think that one must often tolerate these in a world rife with copies of copies of manuscripts. I am left speechless by the solidity and sheer veracity of system. Therefore, my job is only to add or delete a few things. I'm very aware of my place. I will hold on to my spirit until the very end. I pray for the soul of the original. That is, if there is such a thing. Chapter 11. The Three Byakuya Togamis. Part 1. It's a simple story. One young man decided to try to take over the world. After many repeated extraordinary adventures, the young man got what he wanted and was able to return home safe and sound, and he lived happily ever after. But here is the problem. Which of the following young men is the protagonist of this story? Part 2. I believe I've given everyone a slice of cake, no? Back during the Yalta conference when the world was being split up, the president's daughters prepared food to calm the atmosphere. Since we're in a helicopter, a banquet is out of the question. But at the very least, I can offer some cake. Who cares about cake? Let us continue our conversation. After all, at the moment, I am allowing you the right to lead. <laughs> what admirable conduct from you, Byakuya Tagami. Well then, let's get started, shall we? Nesan, you eat up too. Please sample this sweet saccharine cake. It's American, filled with sugar and butter. A dreamy expression crossed the boys. Kazuya Tagami's face. Part 3. And so began our discussion of world domination, over a tea set, under the watchful eye of countless gun muzzles, within a World Health Organization helicopter. In the four years since I'd seen my younger brother, he had grown up so much that I barely recognised him. His thin frame had filled out with an appropriate amount of muscle. A sarcastic smile stretched across his lips. His eyes, which had once been filled with constant fear, now sparkled with self-confidence. And he now wore glasses that resembled Byakuya Summers. This young man, who had only once referred to himself as Byakuya Tagami, was now brazenly exerting control over us, United Nations military forces in tow. He was certainly throwing his weight around. Since I wasn't restrained, I put a finger to my temple and accessed Borgs, intending to get some information. Borgs equals search result number 71009224. Data type, person. Title, Kazuya Tagami. The perpetrator behind the biggest, worst incident in the history of the Tagami family. He was the sole survivor of the burning of Kuchinashi village, but was raised by Michiko Furuhata as a legitimate son. His body was not discovered during the large-scale search that followed the incident, but he was presumed deceased. He has had direct contact with Kudan, one of the top targets marked for assassination by the Tagami conglomerate. He is currently posing as Orphan Elevator, the adopted son of World Health Organization Infectious Disease Prevention Unit Director Keith Elevator and working as the captain of the World Health Organization Infectious Disease Prevention Unit's task force. Byakuya Togami, you are under arrest by the UN-affiliated organization WHO, and currently in our custody. We are acting in accordance with Chapter 7 of the United Nations Charter, set out by the United Nations Security Council. Considering the weight of your crimes, they will require action on par with the International Criminal Tribunal of former Yugoslavia. Hmph. <laughs> Despite being handcuffed, Byakuya-sama's usual demeanour was unruffled. 
If you are planning to treat me the same way as Pol Pot, I will not forgive that. But you are the one spreading the seeds of massacre around the world, aren't you? And do you intend to take me to the International Court of Justice as is? Yes. We will cross the border from the Shik Republic into the Netherlands, and you will stand trial. Your crimes are heavy, Byakya Tagami, for trying to pick a fight with the world. Don't forget that I could allow you to be lynched at this very moment to nary a complaint. You certainly seem like you want to beat me. I'm rational. I don't intend to contribute to the violence you've brought upon the Czech Republic by drawing so many maniacs crazed with bloodlust. What are you talking about you won't contribute to violence? With all these guns here? Think of the number of guns as an estimation of how dangerous you are. If that's the case, then there's far too few. To my delight, the UN forces gun muzzles bobbed in surprise at Byakuya-sama's uncharacteristic smile. Similarly pleased, Kazuya cheerfully responded with, Don't move, okay, Byakuya Tagami? Obviously, if I couldn't keep still at a time like this, I would not be fit to be a Tagami. Well then, until we get you to the International Court of Justice so you can be stuffed into a cell, why don't you enjoy this tea time with me? If you don't remove these shackles, I won't be able to teach you table manners. Would you prefer to eat like a dog? I know you are revered as the super high school level heir, Byakuya Togami, so it would certainly make for a good story, showing you eating like a mangy hound on the floor, to think such a powerless brat say things like he's part of society. Byakuya-sama, despite the handcuffs, skillfully pushed up his glasses with his fingers. <laughs> But you see, I'm already part of society. I'm the captain of the World Health Organization's Infectious Disease Prevention Unit's task force. Kazuya, as if to mimic Byakuya-sama, adjusted his glasses as well. I'm much different from how I was four years ago. Listen here, boy. If you want to have a tea party, how about at least some tea talk? Tell me how much the WHO has this current state of affairs under control. Byakuya asks Kazuya, who complies. The situation has progressed to the following stage. The despair disease can now be spread without the despair novel. This is why the tragedy in that village occurred just now. Byakuya mocks him by saying that the tragedy in the village wasn't brought about by the disease, but by them massacring everyone without distinction. Kazuya retorts calling them all trash, and all he did was throw the rubbish away, so there's no big deal. Shinobu thinks to herself that it might be her fault Kazuya turned out to be this way. Kazuya then declares that Hope's Peak Academy is also under investigation, since the despair novel was written there. During the investigation, they found out that the Academy is secretly working on two projects. The Sage Plan and the Bible Plan. Kazuya says both names have religious connotations, which is ironic considering Hope's Peak is a school that worships Hope as God. He still doesn't have enough information on the Sage Plan, but he says that apparently the despair novel was written using the system of the Bible plan. The Bible plan consists of an AI which studies all the books and stories in the world to create a Bible which will bring hope to people just by reading it. The data that the AI works on are input by super high school level students, such as the super high school level science fiction writer, oral inheritor, light novel writer, folk story collector, and etc. What do you think Hope's Peak Academy is most afraid of? Is it human extinction? No. It's human despair. That's right. Whether it's a giant meteor or a nuclear war, the hope of that academy will not budge. But if during that time, human beings are in so much despair to even give up their struggles and give up hope, then there will be trouble. Yakio says that Kazuya is boring and to go to a bookstore to buy some actual well-written books, instead of whatever this drivel is. Kazuya goes on to say that since they couldn't touch the hearts of all humans, that they instead let an AI create a story that could. Shinobu is confused and wants to take headache medicine, but Byakuya is simply and utterly bored by the idea. Kazuya says it's not in an AI's essence to defeat humanity, such as in Go or Chess, and that Byakuya's way of thinking is backward. I will say that it is boring on the premise of correctly estimating AI capabilities. No matter how good an AI is, one thing is that it can't be done anyway. I would appreciate further details. I'm talking about creation, 
If you don't have the ability to create, you can't write a story. Kazuya retorts, saying that it has no need to, as since it has analysed narratives for so long, it has merely become an algorithmic process. He points out that it's the same as Dr. Victor Frankenstein's story. They tried to play God, and as a result, they created a monster. As Kazuya puts it, People often compare Dr. Victor to God, who is the creator, and the monster is used to compare with Adam, created by God. However, this contrast quickly collapsed. Dr. Victor is a human being imitating God's behaviour. This result is a terrible monster. And a monster will only kill everyone. The story writing AI is also a fake god. It and the Bible that was created are just a strange monster. After listening to the talk of Kazuya, the expression of Byakuya became very smug. He took a sip of black tea and said, Let us not stick to these old literary theories. Listen, Dr. Victor who created the monster, and God who created human beings. The situation is exactly the same. If you ask why, it's because both sides have encountered unexpected situations, isn't it? Yes, that is the death of Christ. Is Christ as God's own son being killed on the cross also within God's plan? If Dr. Victor is a rebel to God, then God is also a traitor to God himself. If Dr. Victor is guilty, then God is. Just like this, after the negation is denied, the result is that God and Dr. Victor are put on the line. In essence, they are equals. Since you are a student of Hope's Peak Academy, you should know these things in advance. It seems that you have read a lot of Zizek's books, but in any case, the books written by anarchists can't save humans. At any rate, this motive makes me very displeased. Motive? It's a third-rate motive to let an AI write a Bible out of fear of human despair. When Hope's Peak Academy was subjected to this boring uneasiness, they were already poisoned by despair. Which is like making a doctor who got a cold force the patient to give him an injection. After Kazia and Byakia throw witty insults at each other, they both look over at the guy next to Byakia, stuffing his face with food. It may be because their hands are cuffed, or just because they are too greedy. But Imposter is buried in the cake, eating it like a pig. He seemed to find it hard to notice that he was caught up in the crowd and slowly lifted his face. His face and glasses were covered with cake. Kazuya called out to the super high school level imposter, aka Mr. Pig. Mr. Pig, said Kazuya, to be a student at Hope's Peak Academy, having ties with those who took the Bible plan system and started the world proclamation, who are you? To all of this, Imposter responds with, Pardon me, but since you aren't eating those carbs, give them to me. Shinobu wonders about who the Imposter is. Originally thinking he might be Kazuya, she dismisses the idea. Is it possible that Imposter shares some sort of relationship with Byakuya then? The Imposter snorts and tells everyone to don't even bother trying to figure out their true identity, and they say that they are just a teenager. Even when Kazuya asks how many people have joined the Despair High School, or if they were the ones who were behind inciting the reserve course to hold their parade, they merely dodge answering it. I just said you don't have to think about my identity. I am just... Yes. I'm just chasing a star. Byakia seemed to look bored as he gazed at the imposter. What do you mean by chasing a star? Explain to me, he ordered. I have been paying attention to you. To me, you are the super high school level heir, a symbol of hope. It is because you are the symbol of hope that I will fall into despair. How twisted. Also, deal with the cream on your face, Byakia replied. The imposter tells the real Byakia that they should eliminate the Who, which doesn't have anything to do with the story, and then start once again the battle between Hope's Peak Academy and the Despair High School. Shinobu compares this to a girl rejoicing after they confessed their love to their crush, and becomes somewhat embarrassed upon seeing it. While this is happening, Shinobu reminds herself of what's important to her. Byakuya Tagami is God. Shinobu believes this to be the absolute truth of the world, though it doesn't need to be expressed in such a way like what the imposter is doing. Shinobu is also quite unhappy that other people are now declaring it as a truth, as she believed that fact was her own personal secret. 
But Kazuya says that the imposter is the one who doesn't have anything to do with this story, since he is just a fake pig. The imposter shoots this back at him, as Kazuya being the one no one wants to see, and that he can't even match up as an imposter himself. Imposter equates Kazuya's skills as a fake to a worm. The imposter then tells him to heed these words and go back home. I have been taken away. My hometown, my name, and my life. It's all gone. There is no place for me to be able to return to. No matter what people say to me, I will stand in front, Kazuya said. Tell me one thing. Is life interesting being robbed by others? Hometown, name, life, and even your beloved sister. Has losing all of those made life interesting? Taunts the imposter with a smile. The imposter's ironic smile makes Shinobu want to vomit, as it reminds her of Kazuya, and she avoids their sight. Since the imposter isn't Kazuya, she has no idea what to make of them. Kazuya looks at Byakuya and asks him to return his sister and everything he stole from him, starting with the Kudan. The imposter also gets in and out as well, since they desire the Kudan as well. This is because, at least how Shinobu sees it, since the Kudan is the secret behind the Tagami family's prosperity, if you can't get it, even if you don't understand it, you can't really become Byakuya Tagami. Answer me, Mr. Authentic. Where is the Kudan? Answer me, Byakuya Tagami. Where is the Kudan? As both demanded, Shinobu notes that the two seem to be acting less like those who want to become Byakuya Tagami, but rather those who want to become his enemy. Byakuya answers that he sealed the Kudan away, since he doesn't need it to dominate the world. As such, Kazuya demands it back since he found it, though Byakuya believes the knowledge of the Kudan's prophecy is worthless, since the future can't be changed, regardless of one knowing or not. While this is happening, Shinobu looks up information about the Kudan. Orbs equals search results. Number 69010922. Classification data. Title. About the various Kudans. Short version. It seems that you do not understand the meaning of prophecy. No matter how many methods are tried, and how many means are used, it cannot stop it. This is prophecy. Torimiki's Pasifae's Banquet. Kazuya argues that even if one is destined for failure, they would still be able to minimize the loss, thanks to the Katan's prophecy giving him a warning. Byakuya just insults him and calls him a defeatist who has needed to face reality. To prove his point, he then wraps the handcuffs he is wearing around Shinobu's neck and pulls with his strength. Shinobu, however, is loving it because of how close Byakuya is. You have been escaping from reality all this time. I want you to see it clearly, Byakuya says. Look carefully. This woman, Blue Ink, belongs to me, so I can even treat her like this. Byakuya-sama raised my head up and rubbed against my cheek. Ah, oh, <laughs> I'm really sweating. This feels weird. Kazuya's exploding blood vessels appeared on his forehead, and his glasses trembled without him having to touch them. No, his whole body was shaking. From the top of his head to his fingertips, this was without a doubt a sign of true madness. Kazuya's body trembled, staring at us intently. Hey! I heard a voice, and in the next minute, the table was cut into two halves, from the middle. The cake and the teacups flew around, and the fake Byakuya screamed with the clearly frustrated voice. Gah! I haven't finished eating yet! Kazuya's right hand. It's the same. The same light sword as that time. My brothers and sisters, murdered in cold blood with that very sword. Your lives are now in the palm of my hand. So, will you be dying now? Do you want to die? Answer me. My, my. What a strange sword that is. How did you manage to pull that party trick off? I cannot wait to slit your goddamn throat! Kazuya approached us with that lightsaber in hand. Yakiya-sama, in Kazuya's blind fury, whispered quietly into my ear. Wait for me. Then he finally let me go. Kazuya snorted and repeatedly gasped in a mixture of pure anger and sexual excitement, restraining the impulse to use the sword on his hand immediately. His expression was so distorted, it looked like a twisted laugh. There's still a long time before we arrive in the Netherlands. Now, Shinobu, it's only been four years since we last met, but let us continue where we left off. Nice and slowly. Part 5. After a while, they switched the helicopter for a train, 
and they continued their journey to the Netherlands, where the International Tribunal is. Shinobu is separated from Byakuya, the imposter, and Kazuya, and put into a prison-like wagon. There are many UN and WHO soldiers guarding it. There, she eavesdrops on a conversation between the imposter, Ibuki Miyoda, and Gundam Tanaka by using Borgs. Hey, the number here is almost the same as the hall of the Yokohama Stadium. Oh, is this where they're going to hold the New Year's concert? Wonders Ibuki. No matter how well these human beings work together, they can't stop the supreme overlord of ice. <laughs> Which came from Gundam. Oh, shut up. Because you two are so useless, we ended up being caught by such a boring group like the United Nations, reprimanded the imposter. Shinobu asked herself how many people are working for the Despair High School. And since Ibuki, Gundam, and Sonia and Soda are already working for them, she thinks that maybe her whole class is, or even year has fallen into despair. She then asks herself why Despair High didn't ask her to join. Although this idea is crazy, this reality is so crazy, I think that it is possible that the reason is because I belong to Byakuya-sama. I felt sad for a few seconds before I thought about it. It didn't matter. I have my god. Although, I don't know who their god is, but they can't be compared to Byakuya Tagami. A soldier brings Shinobu to a luxurious cell room and then leaves. Fixed bed, fixed sofa, folding table, painting on the wall, good air conditioning. I have no interest in rail travel. All it seems to me is that this is just a luxurious single cell. After I sat down at one end of the bed, the door was locked. The soldier just gave me a drink of orange juice. I don't know who he regarded me as. I took a sip of orange juice with dissatisfaction. The long lost water made my stomach irritated and I found myself hungry. Speaking of which, I haven't had a decent bite to eat since I was attacked in the Church of Bones. Although I may be irritated by Mishima Yukio, I began to want to drink hot miso soup and eat plum dry rice balls. Kazuya entered the room holding a prosthetic arm. I'm finally able to be alone with you, my sister, after four years of being alone. He put the right hand on the table and sat down on the sofa. The train is about to leave, just like our future. I stayed silent. From the Czech Republic to the Netherlands will be a long journey. I originally wanted to fly, but we have to go through Germany on the way and they are not willing to give us a flight permit. I stayed silent. Please, sister, don't tease me. Just because I wanted to see my sister, I wanted to hear my sister's voice. I worked very hard up to live till today. So, you think you have won? I'm not that conceited. I'm not the winner yet. But I will be soon. Let me see Byakuya-sama. That's a scary thought. How could I allow that? I have to let my sister sit in the special seat to watch my victory. <laughs> What's so funny? Oh, of course it's funny. Having to speak such villainous lines when I'm clearly the hero. We don't have time to waste like this right now. Kazi responds by saying that she shouldn't worry. Now that everyone involved with the World Domination Proclamation had been captured, that she should just sit back and relax. You think you have won? I repeated. So far, all you've done is somehow come back from the dead and reversed everything. Oh no, I'm not dead. I have hands, and a feet, and a heart, but I have no hope. Where is Byakuya-sama? I asked. Byakuya Tagami, the Despair High School, Class 78, they're all locked up. Shinobu thinks that it's regrettable that Sakura Ogami was captured, but at the same time, if she can move freely, there should be a way to get out of this situation. The train started. The steel dragon started to move slowly. And then the speed gradually increased. As if to show that he was carrying our will, driving forward with violent momentum. The shock from under my butt was unexpectedly comfortable. Perhaps because I was too tired and sleep came to me. However, sleep could not come to her because Kazuya brings her the new prosthetic arm to replace the broken one. Shinobu knows that it's for the best, so she takes off her shirt and extends her left arm from the elbow to him. Sister, I'm sorry. I have not protected you. Although the wound has healed, the skin there is very thin. I almost cried out to prevent Kazuya from seeing it and quickly said, It's not me that you need to apologize to. Who else should I apologize to then, sister? Asked Kazuya. Go and apologize to those you have murdered. Those that I have murdered? 
His tone sounded completely confused. As if there were an old-time novel, this sentence may have been written with very unsavoury katakana. Shinobu reminds him of the siblings that he had murdered, and the villagers that he had killed. Kashiya believes that in the world of the Togami family, it's kill or be killed to justify himself. Plus it was his big sister that brought him into that world anyway. This causes Shinobu to think back about the events of Kuchinashi village. However, she can't quite seem to recall the events very clearly, most likely due to a young age. I suddenly had a question. At that time, which hand did I reach out to Kazuya? The left hand or the right hand? As such, she has to ask Kazuya details about it. Do you remember when I saved you in the village? Yes, for me it is a precious memory, he said. Which hand did I extend to you at that time? Of course, it was the left hand, he confidently said. With that, Shinobu couldn't say anything else and let her be at his mercy. After the installation of the prosthetic hand, I moved it a little. Compared with the latest prosthetic hand made by the Togami conglomerate, it felt more like my own arm. Kazuya explains to Shinobu his plan to conquer the world. He will spread the despair novel even more, and make the world fall into chaos. Then he will accuse Byakuya of everything and arrest him. This way he will be acclaimed as the hero who saved the world from the despair disease. Shinobu refuses to accept this and declares that as long as her work remains unfinished, she isn't finished, and by extension, Byakuya Tagami will not be finished. Even if Byakuya loses and disappears from the world, as long as I am riding Journey Under the Midnight Sun, Byakuya Tagami won't be finished. I won't let him be finished. Kazuya claims she's just being arrogant, and no one would want to breed the biography of a loser. He asserts that as the main protagonist of this story, he'll take back everything that was stolen from him, and steal everything from everyone else. That way, he gets to enjoy the world, while also being the centre of it. You're just an ordinary person, Shinobu says quickly. You're just a general staff member of the United Nations. They can't allow you to have the ambition to conquer the world. It's because I am general staff member of the United Nations that I will arrest Byakuya Tagami and kill that imposter who pretended to be him. Once I eradicate despair disease, I will be hailed a hero by the world. Then once I get the Kudan, I will become Byakuya Tagami. Shinobu knows that if Kazuya was able to pull this off, then it wouldn't just be empty words. He really would have conquered the world, and without the use of the traditional style like territories or nuclear weapons. But would Kazuya really be able to do this? Then suddenly, Shinobu feels like she's being lifted up, as her glass of orange juice flies up into the sky and shatters on the ceiling. The next moment, Everything around me seemed to be tumbling like a washing machine. And now it's time for the translator's notes. For the Eric Holfer quote, we couldn't find the actual book or quote in English, so this is just the translated version. The Yalta Conference, also known as the Crimea Conference, and codenamed the Argonaut Conference, held February 4 to 11, 1945, was the World War II meeting of the heads of government of the United States, the United Kingdom, and the Soviet Union to discuss the post-war reorganisation of Germany and Europe. The aim of the conference was to shape a post-war peace that represented not just collective security order, but a plan to give self-determination to the liberated peoples of post-Nazi Europe. The meeting was intended mainly to discuss the re-establishment of the nations of war-torn Europe. However, within a few short years, with the Cold War dividing the continent, Yalta became a subject of intense controversy. Chapter 7 of the United Nations Charter sets out the UN Security Council's powers to maintain peace. It allows the Council to determine the existence of any threat to the peace, breach of the peace, or act of aggression, and to take military and non-military action to restore international peace and security. Chapter 7 also gives the Military Staff Committee responsibility for strategic coordination of forces placed at the disposal of the UN Security Council. It is made up of the Chiefs of Staff of the five permanent members of the Council. The International Criminal Tribunal for the former Yugoslavia ICTY, was a United Nations court of law dealing with war crimes that took place during the conflicts in the Balkans in the 1990s. During its mandate, which lasted from 1993 to 2017, it was irreversibly changed the landscape of international humanitarian law, provided victims an opportunity to voice the horrors they witnessed and experienced, and proved that those suspected of bearing the greatest responsibility for atrocities committed during armed conflicts can be called to account. 
Pol Pot was a Cambodian revolutionary and politician who governed Cambodia as the Prime Minister of Democratic Kampuchea during 1976 to 1979. Ideologically a Marxist-Leninist and Khmer nationalist, he was leading a member of Cambodia's communist movement, the Khmer Rouge, from 1963 until 1997 and served as the General Secretary of the Communist Party of Kampuchea from 1963 to 1981. Under his administration, Cambodia was converted into a one-party communist state governed according to Pol Pot's interpretation of Marxism-Leninism. The International Court of Justice ICJ, sometimes called the World Court, is the principal judicial organ of the United Nations. The ICJ's primary functions are to settle international legal disputes submitted by states, contentious cases, and give advisory opinions on legal issues referred to it by the UN, advisory proceedings. Through its opinions and rulings, it serves as a source of international law. It is located in The Hague in the Netherlands. In Japanese food culture, it is believed that food placed and eaten at the table is for humans. But it's extremely unsightly to lean over or on the floor or elsewhere because that's what where dogs eat. The full name for the unit that Casio is part of is the Infectious Disease Prevention and Control Unit, IDCU. As for the SAGE plan and Bible plan, well you don't get an explanation for the SAGE plan but it's fairly obvious that it's supposed to be the Hope Cultivation Plan or as most people would know it, the Izuru Kamakura Project. It can also be translated as the Saints Plan, but Sage Plan is kind of more accurate, so that's what we went with. Interesting enough, they originally had a Bible that they were working on in order to, before they created, you know, their God, basically. It's a very interesting take on it. Slavov Žižek is a Slovenian philosopher, currently a researcher at the Department of Philosophy of the University of Lijib Lijana, sorry if I'm pronouncing that wrong, Faculty of Arts, and International Director of the Birkbeck Institute for the Humanities of the University of London. He is also a global eminent scholar at Kyung Hee University in Seoul. He works in subjects including continental philosophy, political theory, cultural studies, psychoanalysis, film criticism, Marxism, Hegelianism, and theology. Pasiphae was the daughter of Helios, the titan god of the sun, and Perse of the Oceanids. Like her doublet Europa, her origins were in the east, and in her case, Colchis. She was the sister of Circe, Aetes, and Perses, and she was given marriage to the king Minos of Crete. With Minos, she was the mother of Achacalus, Ariadne, Androgeus, Glossius, Decalion, Phaedra, Xenodice, and Catrius. She was also the mother of the star-like Asterion, called by the Greeks the Minotaur. The Torimiki book Pasiphae's Banquet is a short story about Kadans. Yokohama Station is a major interchange railway station in Nishiku, Yokohama, Japan. It is the busiest station at Kanagawa Prefecture and is the fifth busiest in the world as of 2013, serving 760 million passengers a year. Kimitake Hiroka, also known under the pen name as Yukio Mishima, was a Japanese author, poet, playwright, actor, model, film director, nationalist, and founder of the Taiten no Kai. Mishima is considered one of the most important Japanese authors of the 20th century. He was considered for the Nobel Prize in Literature in 1968, but the award went to his countryman, Yasunari Kawabata. His works in question here is Apollo's Cup, a collection of many travel stories by Mishima in Europe, and lots about the food eaten there. Mishima's work is characterized by its luxurious vocabulary and decadent metaphors. It's a fusion of traditional Japanese and modern Western literary styles and its obsessive assertions of the unity of beauty, eroticism, and death. Mishima's personal life was controversial, which makes him a contested figure today. 
ideologically a white ring nationalist, Mishima formed the Tatan no Kai, an unarmed civilian militia, for the avoid purpose of restoring power to the Japanese Emperor. On November 25th, 1970, Mishima and four members of his militia entered a military base in central Tokyo, took the commandment hostage and attempted to inspire the Japan Self-Defense Force to overturn Japan's 1947 constitution. When this was unsuccessful, Mishima committed seppuku, the act of disembowelment. The Mishima Prize also seems to share a name with Mishima, and is an award that was also given to Yu Yasato, the author of Danganronpa Tagami. I'm not sure if that's relevant, but they just have the same name. And last but not least, it looks like you weren't supposed to like Kazuya after all TV tropes. Seriously, somebody needs to actually get onto TV tropes and edit that stupid thing. It's so, it's so wrong. Like it's got <laughs> so much misinformation on TV tropes. Anyway, thank you all so much for watching this episode, or listening. It only ramps up from here, gets crazier, and then gets explained even crazier than that. I'm sure you all enjoy it very much, as much as I do, and as much as Seiko did, and pretty much everyone else I talk to it enjoys, I think, the third book the most out of all of them. So, thank you so much for listening. Don't forget to subscribe, and like the video, and share it with people, because... That's the right thing to do. Have a great day, everyone.